now coming to invinyl holmia we would have studied this in first year second year as well as in final year but do we really understand what a hernia is so when i say a hernia i am not telling you the definition definition is textbook definition but what we need to understand from a surgical perspective is most hernias i would say 90% of the hernias are going to be like this they will have three components they will have a defect defect means a weakness or a gap this gap can mean the muscle or in the aponeurosis there will be a sac sac means peritoneum and within the sac there will be some content so whenever you think of a hernia please think of it like this that for there to be a hernia there should be a hole in the muscle or a hole in the aponeurosis behind the aponeurosis is the peritoneum so the peritoneum should bulge out that is the sac and inside the sac there should be some content the content can be intestine omentum and so on and so forth there are very few hernias in the body where some of these contents are missing like in some hernias there may not be a sac there may just be a defect it's possible like an epigastric hernia there is only a defect many times there is no sac they are still called hernias but as a rule most hernias will have this definition or these components that we need to know a gap in the muscle or a defect peritoneum pouting that is the sac and within the sac some intra abdominal contents now who gets a hernia what are the theories this has never been asked but it was there in 2018 edition of billy and in the last december 2022 edition of billy there are some theories as to who gets a hernia there is one theory which explains why someone gets a congenital inguinal hernia this is the one they i expect them to ask why does someone get a congenital inguinal hernia now understand congenital inguinal hernia is a little different this hernia happens due to patent processus vaginalis so this hernia is nothing but a hernia arising due to patent processus vaginalis now what is patent processus vaginalis when the testes is descending from the abdomen to the scrotum when the testes is descending it moves through the inguinal canal like this so the testes will enter the deep ring then it will enter the inguinal canal superficial ring then it will go into the scrotum so this is how the testes descends in a normal person as it is descending from up to down it is carrying with itself a fold of peritoneum so while it is descending it is carrying with itself a fold of peritoneum this fold of peritoneum is called processus vaginalis before birth or typically at birth this processus vaginalis gets obliterated it gets obliterated if the processus vaginalis doesn't obliterate if it doesn't obliterate then there is a natural defect that is the deep ring there is a sac which is this peritoneum or the processus vaginalis and some intra abdominal contents can come into the sac this is a congenital inguinal hernia so congenital inguinal hernia is due to patent processus vaginalis congenital hydrocele's also have the same pathogenesis now the theory is this patent processus vaginalis it gets obliterated due to two hormones one is called calcitonin gene related peptide cgrp or calcitonin gene related peptide and the other is called hepatocyte growth factor hepatocyte growth factor and calcitonin gene related peptide the theory is if these factors or hormones are not produced adequately if they are deficient then the processus vaginalis will remain patent so they are required to get it obliterated and fibrosed if they are deficient for whatever reason then it will remain patent if it remains patent you can get a congenital inguinal hernia this is something that is there newly it was there in the 27th edition also of course for acquired hernias there are many many theories 
many explanations most of the explanations talk about abdominal wall weakness so anything that causes a weakness in the abdominal wall causes it to stretch over a period of time like birth trauma repeated pregnancies so repeated pregnancies obstetric trauma or age related weaknesses that's why hernias are com- some types of hernias are common in the elderly age related weaknesses they are going to be responsible for acquired hernias but these are some theories collagen disorders but collagen disorders are quite rare they are responsible these are some of the theories as to why people get hernia not everybody gets it but some people get it or has because of some of these problems these are acquired hernias all right so these are the things you need to know the risk factors and the theories this these have never been asked yet i am sure they will come in the next exam or one of the upcoming entrances mm-hmm.